He was worried he'd cry. He's so fantastic, isn't he? Give him another applause, everyone. <laughs> Woo! And just, everybody get up for a second. We've been sitting a while. Everybody, just stand up for a minute. Shake out a little bit. Uh, shake out a little bit, you know? There we go. Feels a little better, doesn't it? Oh, good stretch, you know? Breakfast kind of... Okay, everybody have a seat. <laughs> All right. Um, wow. Is this incredible or what? <laughs> um, my editor, Joan Powers with Candlewick, is here, and she's been leaning over to my friend. She's like, so did you hear Eunice's speech? My friend's like, eh. And <laughs> so in honor of Joan, I just wanted to know, because Fed Angie was actually originally created on a napkin in Madison, Wisconsin. For all of you, I want you to know. Right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! It just keeps getting better. So uh, Joan's like, I'm getting out right now. So it's been a crazy time, everyone. Uh, <laughs> uh, Fat Angie is a book about essentially outsiders, you know, what it means not to fit, not to belong, not to connect, and to feel like, how do you do that? And when I was growing up, the, you know, I, I don't really like that question, what's your favorite book? But I do feel like The Outsiders was a turning point for me. And so... Writing Fan Angie was also a turning point for me. Um, I kind of quit that book when Andrea Cascardi said to me a lot, she was my previous agent who now runs Egmont, she said to me, Eunice, there's some challenges here. And I'm like, you don't understand me. You don't get my book. But she was absolutely right about the challenges that I had not really broached in the book. And my friend, my dear friend Linda Sanders, who the book is dedicated to, who has since passed of uh, cancer right before the book released, um, she gave me this, this hoodie and uh, for my birthday, and I open it up out of this box, and it's this, this hoodie it has the hornet's nest, which is a symbol in the book, for anybody who's read it. And it's got this bulging bicep, you know. And on the back, it has the number of Angie's sister who's missing in the war. And I'm like, really don't load the deck for me here. And she says, listen, you've got to finish this book. It's going to change young people's lives. And um, I think about that a lot. I think about Linda and her faith in this book, and to pushed me to be the very best version of myself to finish this book. And I'm, it's such an honor to be here and to celebrate this with you. Um, I think, you know, I, I could, I, I don't, I think you can, you can read the jacket and figure out what the book's about, and they've actually just told you. But <laughs> that's not on the napkin, oops. And, um, but I think what I, I want to say is, of course, you know, I want to thank all of you for being here, for being phenomenal, for giving this book a chance um, a resurgence because it came out early last year and this is a book while it's a book about outsiders it became a sort of a campaign for outsiders I basically met a kid in May of 2013 in small town South Texas approximately uh, 2,000 people and he's a kid who doesn't like to look at people he's a kid who doesn't like to talk to people he's suicidal he doesn't engage but he's a great writer okay but what do you have in small town South Texas? You don't have a lot of access to creative resources. And his history teacher says to me, hey, you're in town, and, and it's not far from where I grew up. He says, she goes, will, will you look at this, this thing he wrote? I look at him like, wow, this is fantastic. Who's working with this kid? Nobody. She goes, will you talk to him? So I feel, talk to me. So the kid comes in. I'm a very gregarious person, if you haven't picked up on this. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, how you doing? And whoa. You know, I was like, dial it down, Eunice. And, um, <laughs> woo! And so uh, we sit down. Now, again, he's looking down. He's not engaging. He's shut down. And I know you all feel the Lifetime Movie Network thing coming. All right? <laughs> all right, hold on. So we're sitting there, and I said, hey, man, I read your story. I said, you know, it's kind of like the Matrix meets, like, Sin City's graphic novel. And I like some of this edge. But, you know, right here where you said they didn't have sex, and she ends up pregnant, like, the next day. I'm not really buying that part. <laughs> Let's talk about that. But anyway, and so we're talking about this kid's story. And here's what happens. As we're talking, I'm talking. He's not talking. But then I get him to look up. So that's win number one for me. I got him to look at me. And that means he's not all the way in here still. Then I get this kid to smile. And I'm like, okay, I am winning this moment. And then the last thing is he spoke to me. The kid who doesn't talk is talking to me. And I'm like, how is this happening? What am I doing? And um, I was just being me. And I was talking about this, 
this thing that he likes to do, which is write. And we talked about story and what that means to him. And by the end of it, in that 45-minute time I'm with this kid, he is chatty Charlie, just going. And I'm like, how is this happening? How is this happening in this moment? And I thought to myself, if I could do this with one kid, what if I traveled America and tried to do it with a lot of kids? And I did it at no cost to their programs for X amount of time. <laughs> and that's what happened. This book called Fat Angie, about an outsider who doesn't belong, became the foundation for going out and sitting down with kids in what we call at risk, however you define that, whether it's by being queer or whether it's by being uh, economically challenged or being um, wealthy but yet no one's acknowledging. Redefining that idea, right? And saying, sitting down with kids across America and saying, you matter, I believe in you, and I'm going to stand here and we're going to do this together. And I had no experience at this. <laughs> I'm a filmmaker. And so we filmed this as we went along, which he talked about. We we're in post-production on called At Risk Summer. And that's literally on this day last year, I was on the road driving a compact Ford Focus. And um, I have a fear of cars and tornadic weather and heights. And all of these things were like at the very beginning of the drive was like, you know, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, tornado weather. <laughs> So to be here today and to say to you, I got to do this thing because Candlewick Press believed in this book and because now when, when you all, you're sitting here and you're part of the celebration, right, of this kind of powerful writing that we do, writing of diversity, that there are kids across America because of one book and this idea I had because I met one kid in a small town in South Texas, like their lives have changed. And they, and, and, and they pick up this book now and they read it and they write to me and they tell me what they're feeling, what they're thinking. And I'm sure every author has had this, but I didn't have it like this. And to know that, that, that the impact that what we do when we put it on the page, and you know, when you open that door for a kid as a librarian, it's like, here, here's a book I think might work for you. Like how that changes young people. And um, I have to tell you, it has been a fantastic year. It has been fantastic. I am broke. But I got a documentary to show for it. <laughs> and, um, and I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. Uh, money will come and go. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> hope it'll come back more. But I'm not going to lie. But, um, but yeah, I just, whew, it has just been, it's, it's the best time to be an outsider in this world. It's the best time to celebrate being different and belonging and what that means. And showing up. And that's, that's what I say every step of the way. is showing up has currency. And this book just keeps showing up. And when you say, here, I'm going to give you this Stonewall Award. You are, you're putting that book out there for those kids. And you are showing up for them. And you're saying, you matter. You have a voice. And you should be heard. And I tell you, <laughs> to have that honor just blows my mind. And to be able to share this with, with, with you know, my fellow non honorees and <laughs> Kristen, who's a rock star. Hello. You know, I mean, it's just fantastic. It's just fantastic. And, you know, I'm looking at the napkin to make sure I didn't miss anything super important. Um, oh, I, I forgot. David, Sherry from Wisconsin. She's a librarian. She's really got to connect with you. That was the other thing I was going to mention. But there you go. So, um, good job, Sherry. Got you there. She had no idea who I was. <laughs> so, yeah, I just... We're, we're here in a creative revolution. We are doing great things. Stonewall is doing great things. And um, I just want to say thank you for this honor. Thank you for honoring the kids that I went out to workshop across America with and, um, and making this book have a longevity that I hope it has earned and deserves. And, uh, you know, one last thing before I leave. Peter actually tried to tell me about the Stonewall Award. I actually didn't know I won it. So... I get, a, I get a, my phone, I turn it on at 5.30 in the morning in, um, in uh, California, I'm hanging out with some friends, I turn it on, and it blows up, and A.S. King says, dude, congratulations. I don't know if you know who A.S. King is, the author, and I, I have no idea what she's talking about, and I'm like, dude, what did I do? <laughs> and she says, dude, you just won the Stonewall Award. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then, so, of course, my agent... <laughs> Now, Aaron Murphy says, well, didn't the committee try to contact you and talk to you? Because that's sort of the tradition of the committee. That's exactly how Aaron talks. Not really. And um, so I, I checked my, I said, no, nobody called me. So I look at my voicemail. 
and there's this call from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and I'm like, ah, and I was like, check it, it's like, hi, this is the Stonewall Committee, we're just calling to tell you that you've won the Stonewall Award. And I'm like, fantastic, except I wrote it to voicemail when they called the day before because I thought it was a bill collector. <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I, I called Peter and said, hey, I'm sorry, man, I thought you were a bill collector. He's like, oh, honey, I've been called worse. I was like, all right. So thank you, everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your brunch. And thank you for celebrating all of us who are here and for standing up on command. All right, see you.